Today, we're gonna to show you how to start building an Active Directory Certificate Services Lab for free. It uses a series of scripts, it's automated, it's easy. Let's go. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Romo with PKI Solutions and I'm the shopkeeper here at Minding the Key Store. We are going to talk about using Hyper-V and a series of PowerShell scripts to build an Active Directory environment that you can install ADCS on top of. But first, it's time for the question that's the battle for the ages. What virtualization platform do you prefer to use to build a lab? Are you a Hyper-V person? Do you like to use VMware Workstation? Do you dig into some of the bigger virtualization platforms like uh, ESXi or uh, VMware vCenter? Are you a virtual box kind of person? I'd love to hear in the comments below. Let me know, what are you currently using to build your lab? And if you are not a Microsoft Hyper-V person, do you think you might give this a try? I'd love to hear. Okay, let's dig right into it. So what's the magic behind building these labs in an automated, scalable, free fashion? Well, uh, if you look at the screen here, uh, the secret to all the magic is a lab environment called Autolab. Um, this is something that's licensed and put out to the public for free. It's a joint venture between Pluralsight, the virtual training platform, and MIT. So Pluralsight has taken over this project. Uh, it has been uh, around for quite a few years for Hyper-V. Pluralsight uses it for all of its labs, and it sits on top of a virtual engine that MIT uh, maintains called Lability, which uh, it is a series of desired state configuration um, variables that will pull software down and, and install it on your local machine. So uh, Autolab, uh, you grab Autolab first and download it, and then it runs Lability uh, modules. It, it pulls the framework down and then downloads the software. So here's how it works in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to grab this Autolab series of PowerShell scripts. We're going to put it on our on the D drive of our system. It's going to, this is on my studio machine, by the way. I've never done this on my machine here. I've done it on my uh, workstation for standard PKI work. Um, so I'm going to go from scratch on this system. So I'm going to uh, download Autolab, put it on my D drive where I have plenty of space. It's going to enable Hyper-V. Um, and then we're going to go through the build process. And I'm going to tell you real time how long it takes to build a vanilla lab out of the box, no customization, no anything. And uh, in future episodes, we're gonna talk about how to customize those. If you wanna customize the name of your domain and put service accounts and some of those other things in the mix, we'll talk about those in future episodes. Before we get in too far, here is your disclaimer. This is purely for lab testing purposes. This is not an infrastructure that's intended for your production environment. Please do not set up Hyper-V on your personal desktop and then put a certificate server uh, certification authority on there and start issuing certs off of it to your prod environment. Please don't do that. This is simply for testing. This is if you want to get something up quickly and easily and cheaply so that you can test a build out of things like Endes or uh, a policy CA, or if you wanted to, you know, test different template revisions. This is purely for that. Um, this is not intended for your production environment. Don't take this and put it on a blade and put it in your data center and say, we're good to go. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer for testing purposes only. I've created a folder on my D drive and just called it Autolab. Uh, I have downloaded Autolab from GitHub. I'll put a link in the description so you can go to that same location and grab that folder as well, that zip file. Uh, and I have uh, it ready to go. I'm just gonna extract it, right click, extract here. There's our Autolab repository. Next, we're gonna open up PowerShell as an administrator in the directory where you extracted Autolab. And we're going to run the following command. Install dash module space PS Autolab dash force dash skip publisher check. Uh, and you get is one of the Lability modules. We're gonna say yes. Now we're gonna set the execution policy to bypass. Uh, 
Now, if you have a code signing a certificate infrastructure and you want to sign these scripts, that's a process you definitely could go through. Once you've set the bypass and execution policies for PowerShell, uh, you need to target, uh, you need to, to get Autolab fully configured and target the directory. So what we're going to do is we're going to run setup-host-destination path and where you want Autolab to set up. By default, it will go to the root of your C drive. So if you just type in setup-host, uh, it is going to put it C auto lab it'll create the directory for you i want my lab directory to be on my d drive free up space for my operating system so i'm going to hit that again as an administrator okay this is going to set uh partial remoting it's going to install the rest of lability for you it's going to update pester which is a series of notification scripts and set up hyper-v for you uh, it's going to create the D auto lab folder. Do not delete the D auto lab folder. That's where all of your configuration stuff sits. So I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to challenge me to reboot when it's done. Setting trusted hosts, hosts. I can't even speak. Pull this up so that everybody can see. Okay. Local host is about to reboot. Uh, so it's set up. It was that fast. Set up Hyper V, uh, uh, grab Lability, and now it's ready to initialize. So I'm going to stop the recording, let the system reboot, and we will keep going. So we've run our PowerShell commands to set up the execution and the bypass uh, settings. Uh, the system's rebooted, and now we're ready to deploy. So we've got Hyper-V uh, set up on this particular machine, and we're ready to uh, set up a deployment. Now, Autolab has a series of uh, baseline labs that come with it. So if you go to the D drive, uh, where, or where you've un, uh, unzipped or unrard uh, the... Uh, directory and deployed Autolab 2. Under Autolab configurations, there's a series of different uh, of different lab deployments that you can do. And what we're going to do for the sake of demonstration today is we're going to do a uh, multi-role server, which when you dig into the config files is an Active Directory deployment. Uh, there's a certificate services deployment that goes with that. It's very plain Jane. Uh, does not follow best practices. Um, it's one of the things that I take out in my deployments, actually, if I'm not mistaken, out of the box. It puts the CA on the domain controller, which we don't recommend. Um, but uh, it, it does that. It deploys a web server. It deploys a uh, baseline workstation. Um, sets them all up. Put them, puts them on a domain so that they can talk to each other. Um, so what you want to do is you want to run an elevated PowerShell command uh, and navigate to the location where one of those configurations reside. Uh, in this case, we're going to run the multi-role server 2016, so all the servers will be 2016 boxes. And then we're going to run uh, setup-lab. Okay, we're going to say yes to the provider. Now it's checking other uh, modules that we've already checked for updates for. It says it doesn't require anything. And now it's starting to configure all of the different settings. And you can see there's our domain controller. It's grabbing software from Microsoft. And here we go. So. I'm going to let this record. Uh, we're going to speed up the footage, though, so that you get an idea of how long it actually takes. And we'll check back in after the uh, all of the software installs. Let's double check Hyper-V. Yeah, nothing's been installed on Hyper-V just yet. So we're going to let it do its thing. Okay, that software downloaded and installed. It took approximately six minutes to do that. Uh, and now we've got the virtual machines here in Hyper-V. Uh, they're sitting 
uh, with a domain controller, a server, and a client, uh, just basic operating system deployments, uh, the names of the hosts in Hyper-V and or the machines in their given Active Directory environment, the name of the AD domain, all of that's customizable in Autolab. This is simply how that multi-role 2016 deployment looks out of the box. Um, so once we have Setup Lab run, uh, and we've deployed. We're now going to uh, run the labs. So we're going to, with an elevated command prompt in that same directory where the multi role 2016 um, uh, set of scripts are, we're going to run run dash lab. And if you look here in Hyper-V up above, we've got the domain controller running first. It's going to make sure that the uh, AD environment comes up. This will take a few minutes. Uh, it's going to initialize domain services for the first time, make sure that things are working properly. Once that's done, it will spin up the other two um, uh, members of this Active Directory lab. So I'm going to let the video run and we'll speed this up while it's waiting for the virtual machines to deploy. So now if we look, all three, uh, the domain controller, server one, and client one, all three of those machines are currently running. Uh, so once we've set up the lab as running, we're going to enable internet access by running the command enable dash internet. Okay. Um, this makes sure that the lab environment can access the outside world. And once all of that's done, we're going to validate. You don't necessarily have to do this every single time. Uh, I like to do it the first time I set up Auto Lab on a system, um, and that's validate dash lab. Let's scale this down just a little bit and scroll down. Validate dash lab and let it do its thing. After running uh, for about 10 minutes, uh, it was in a loop where our test was failing. Uh, so I jumped back out. I hit Control C and jumped back out. And uh, in the, the the cool thing about this uh, series of modules is that there's pretty good documentation to go with it. And they said, hey, if you have issues, uh, you could run this individual test, invoke dash pester, and this VMware uh, VM validate test and it targets the configurations, the desired state configuration that you've got in your files compared to what's actually out there. And everything passes, DC's good, server's good, the client's good, except for uh, the remote, uh, RSAT remote server administration toolkit did not install properly. Uh, so there's something wrong with that command, or it's the flavor of operating system that's part of the lab that's deployed that RSAT does not install uh, the way it's supposed to. Uh, so this isn't a showstopper uh, in, able to move in, in being able to move forward, but uh, you might actually sit for an extended period of time, and here's a way that you can jump back out of it. If you're sitting for a long period of time, you can control C out as it loops through, uh, and then run this invoke pester, uh, and it targets, rather than look through all of the configs, it targets specifically what you have for your lab, uh, and brings you back here. So using the uh, password that's listed in the multi-role-server-2016 configuration data file, if we open this up actually, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of definition information that's in here. This isn't everything that you need for the lab, but there's some pretty important information that can be customized. Most notably is the password that you need to get into each of these systems. Um, so in this particular deployment, it's a core deployment of uh, operating system for the DC. It's a core deployment for uh, the member server, uh, and it's a Windows 10 uh, enterprise system that's deployed um, and made a member of that. And if you look down here in the corner, it's Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. It's valid for 90 days. It gives you the build um, that's uh, been run. So I logged in. It took a few minutes for it to initialize. Between the lab testing and this, um, it's probably been 20 or 25 minutes. We're probably at 40 minutes total going through this process. Um, if you open up an elevated PowerShell uh, prompt and you run this get 
dash windows capability space dash name rsat online and then pipe that to uh, add windows capability online um, it will install all of the admin tools that RSAT has to offer. Again, this is just for a lab. This isn't recommended for all workstations, but uh, just to get things up and running, you know, going with this uh, aggressive approach and installs uh, all of the admin tools. And so now, if I open up Active Directory Users and Computers or the AD Administration Center, whichever you prefer, it's going to give you uh, an error that says, hey, if you want to manage users on your local machine, uh, use the local users and groups. If you're looking for the domain, you need to log in with domain admin rights. Um, and we're going to change, we're going to retarget AD users and, and computers and target our dc1.company.pry, which is a domain that Autolab deploys by default. And there it is. And let's maximize this out so it's a little easier to see. And if we look here, there's our client workstation. There's our domain controller, DC1. And if we go down here to servers, there's server one. Um, and we can add users. There's a bunch of uh, test OUs that are here uh, with you know AD groups that are here as well. Um, so if you wanted some test users, these are all good to go. All of the user credentials, the password is that same password that's in the config. You can you can customize that. You can customize the OUs that are deployed. You can customize the groups and the user accounts that are in here. Um, but the point of the exercise was to show that if you don't have Hyper-V installed um, and, and configured and or you've never downloaded a Windows operating system before, um, in pretty short order with the exception of running a manual step uh, to get RSAT going, um, it was about a half hour, maybe 45 minutes um, to get everything up and running. Um, we can customize this a lot further. You can set it up so that the operating system is the full GUI version instead of server core. You can make it server 2019 instead of 2016. Uh, server 2022 has not been added to this yet. You would have to manually uh, download. It's not part of the list uh, that you can target with Autolab and Lability. So you would have to manually grab a 2022 server ISO and and install or, or target that as part of an OS deploy. Um, the last update for Autolab was in April, if I'm not mistaken. I wouldn't be surprised with uh, 2022 being uh, distributed if Autolab isn't updated in the very near future. And that was setting up Autolab and using it so that you could install and configure Hyper-V and then deploy an Active Directory lab on your system using trial software in just a few minutes. And if you found this helpful, if you thought this was useful, if you liked hanging out at the shop with us here at Minding the Key Store, we would love it if you would subscribe, if you would hit that thumbs up, if you'd hit the bell icon so that you got notified. It helps us immensely. It helps get the word out that this information that we're sharing uh, with other PKI professionals professionals like yourself. Uh, they can hear how they could build a lab environment, uh, how they could troubleshoot certificate services and topics that are near and dear to all of our hearts for those of us that have worked in environments uh, maintaining and deploying Active Directory certificate services and other PKI platforms. I'm Brian Roma. We'll catch you next time.